What's up, smarty people? It's Keys Dan with RadioWhat.com, DJLittleRock.com, coming to you live and in living color from the Radio What Studios. And this is my podcast, What Makes You Smarter? It's an extension of the RadioWhat.com internet radio station that I've been running for quite some time. And if you need DJ services, where do I always send you? DJLittleRock.com. One more time, DJLittleRock.com. Check availability and get a free price quote, and maybe you could have me at your next event. You know I like to party with the people. The people need to be entertained. Are you not entertained? Let me entertain you. Also, if you'd like to tell your story or hear the stories of others, I encourage you to check out my other podcast. It's called What Makes You Famous. Find it everywhere using the hashtag what makes you famous also i'm supposed to tell you to go like and subscribe uh on spotify you know this way i can i can maybe make a couple couple pennies on this podcast that i'm doing here today on the program interesting facts Pulled from interestingfacts.com. What a great website. Oh, so full of information. Stuff uh, to, to fill your head with knowledge and to be used at dinner parties and gatherings to make you the smartest person in the room. Uh, today, I have uh, interesting facts. Interestingfacts.com. Once again, six unusual ways people used to be paid. Most of us are used to our wages or salary being paid directly to us or into a bank account. If uh, some might still receive a check in the mail, a few might even get an envelope at the end of each week or month containing their pay. But forms of payment in the past varied enormously, and some would seem downright strange to us in the 21st century. From salt to knives, here are six unusual ways people used to be paid for their labor. Number one, salt. The word salary is derived from the Latin word salarium. This translates to allowance or salt money and literally meant the allowance given to us to buy salt. Sal is the Latin word for salt. Historically, salt was one of the great importance because it allowed for the preservation of food. Without salt, soldiers would need to fish or hunt for their food each day. Therefore, being paid in salt or with enough money to buy salt which was an expensive commodity, made life more convenient. The word salarium made its way into French and then English, and by the Middle Ages, salary was being used to refer to compensation for work. This is also the root of the phrase, worth your salt. Yeah, I knew salt was was money. (laughs) Number two, beer. After a hard day's work, you might sit back and relax with a beer. In ancient Egypt and Mesopotamia, it might have been your payment. Egyptians considered beer a food of the gods. The deity Osiris supposedly taught people how to brew, and they used it as both medicine and a type of currency. London's British Museum holds a 5,000-year-old Sumerian stone tablet that historians think is a pay stub and one that indicates payment in made in beer. Early beers, often brewed by women, were thick, yeasty concoctions, almost meals in themselves, that were enjoyed by adults and children. Drink responsibly. A message from Keys Dan. I added that myself. Number three. Knives. Receiving a knife as payment for your services was a common occurrence in ancient China from about the 7th to the 2nd century BCE. In fact, money knives were often carried on a belt around one's waist, providing easy access to them as currency or for more traditional purposes. According to legend, the practice may have originated when a prince who was running on low on currency allowed his soldiers to use knives to barter with villagers. It then became more widespread until the metal knives were a currency in their own right, made of bronze, copper, or tin segments of the knife could be cut off to use as payment, while the knife still retained its usefulness. Eventually, the knives shrunk until they became more like a small knife-shaped pieces of metal used for currency than actual knives meant for cutting. Knives. Okay. Number four. 
Squirrels. Yes, squirrels. <laughs> it may sound gruesome to modern readers, but in Russia and Finland, squirrel pelts were once used as a form of currency. Fur was a valuable commodity in the frozen tundra, providing a source of clothing and blankets. Therefore, the pelts became important in trading. Sometimes those using pelts as currency went even further, using the ears, snouts, and other parts to make change. There was an incredible benefit to this system of currency. Some have speculated that it helped prevent plague as the Black Death swept through most of Europe, the lack of squirrels to carry infection via fleas meant that people in Russia suffered from the devastating disease less than people in some neighboring countries. Number five, Katanga crosses. If you were to see a Katanga cross in a museum or gallery, you might think it was a piece of art, perhaps religious in nature. In fact, these striking copper crosses were a form of currency in parts of what is now the Democratic Republic of the Congo and Zambia in the 19th and early 20th centuries. The Katanga region is rich in copper, so the metal was frequently used in payment. Coppersmiths made the crosses by pouring molten metal into sand molds. Each one weighed about two pounds and one cross could buy about 22 pounds of flour or six axes. In case of an emergency, the cross could also be melted down to craft into a spear or a tool. How about that? Number six. Nutgeld. Did I pronounce that correctly? Currency is usually based on something that is perceived has perceived value. But what do you do when you can't access the material to make that currency? In case of Germany, in the case of Germany and some parts of Europe after World War I, they improvised with nut guild necess- necessity money. Coins were hard to come by at the time, and they had to be melted down for their metal during the war. Post-war financial woes also meant that paper money had little value, and so localities began to use alternative forms of currency made out of whatever they had access to. Silk, foil, wood, and many other materials were used as not guild. Although not officially currency, their use was widespread within communities as a means to pay for goods and services. How about that? You do what you have to do. My goodness. You run out of money. You do the barter system. I, I think that's uh, that that went uh, I, there was the barter system. I'm going to have to do a, a little what makes you smarter on the barter system because I need to know more about how people used to uh, trade for goods and services before money. I think it's pretty self-explanatory, but uh, maybe there's a little bit more on it. That's six unusual ways people used to be paid. This has been what makes you smarter. Also, if you'd like to tell your story or hear the stories of others, I encourage you to check out my other podcast. It's called What Makes You Famous. Find it everywhere using the hashtag What Makes You Famous. Hey, add me on Spotify, please. Subscribe. Drop me some comments. Let me know if you have some unusual fast facts or just some facts in general. I like to fill my head with knowledge. That's it for me. It's Keys Dan, RadioWhat.com, DJLittleRock.com. Peace.